this is like, yeah, I mean, hi, I'm Jackson. Where are we right now? Uh, <laughs> you know, this is, uh, Sweeter Street in Wakefield, I guess. How would you describe your best friend, and how would your best friend describe you? I think I would describe my best friend as someone who like, I understand and don't feel uncomfortable around them, and I can just do, like, act how I feel. How do you think your best friend would describe you? <laughs> Probably not in that way. Uh, <laughs> But, who can be sure? Uh, what song is stuck in your head right now? I didn't have a song stuck in my head. But, we can talk about songs I listened to recently. Well, one song that I listened to recently was by a band called Krill. And something I remember from that song is uh, the chorus. Yeah. Krill, 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 krill forever. Krill. Yeah. yeah, I mean, more or less. What's your favorite CD? Well, not my favorite album but my favorite CD was uh, Lenny Kravitz's Baptism because the cover is just him in like red, red paint. paint and his knees sticking out with the guitar but that CD came apart like the copy that we had the front cover separated from the part that holds the CD so I would always like every time I would listen to it it would actually come apart and I always have to put it back together Got all scratched up and everything. It's definitely my favorite CD. Describe your mom to me. She's making dinner right now. I think she was cutting some vegetables. I saw her chopping an onion. What is the album of the year, 2020, thus far? I don't know if I've listened to any music that came out in 2020 other than one song from Childish Gambino's new album that oh. someone sent to me called Algorithm. Check out that song. But yeah, I mean, I don't know. Living under a rock, I guess. Uh, can you describe the moon to me? I just read an interesting passage about the moon. I was reading about Sufi tradition, which is like the Islamic mysticism, I guess. If you think about the moon as the heart and the soul as uh, the night is the soul and the sun is like the spirit or what would be sort of like more intellectual conception of holiness or the divine you have the heart or the moon it's like the last vestige of that light um, that illuminates the night and the knowledge of the soul I thought that was kind of interesting I don't I'm just like relating it to you I don't really I haven't thought about it that much but I just read it like an hour ago if you had a side job what would it be I feel like this question 
makes me feel like I'm not putting enough effort into my life. Uh, let's see. I mean, I would probably be like a musician, like a gigging, playing musician. Emphasis on the tense of the word would be. Yeah, that would be an interesting job. What or who is your favorite cartoon character or animated character? I really loved uh, Adventure Time a lot. Specifically, do I have a specific favorite character in Adventure Time? It's gotta be Ice King. Ice King like, with his, I don't want to give away any spoilers here, but the way his, the evolution of his character works, I really like, um, and also, like, not only the way that it actually happens in the chronological universe of the show, but the way that it's revealed over time in the show, because those are sort of different from each other, and... Yeah, he's just, I think he's hilarious, and he's kind of like a tragic character, but most of the time the tragedy is like in such a sort of cringe-like way that I just think it's kind of hilarious. And he's ultimately good-natured, I think, even though he's portrayed to be like the villain. He's just kind of a sad, lonely guy. So, I like him a lot. What is your opinion of the band Krill? They're cool. I'm, I'd never heard of them before. I just checked them out and I was listening to lots of their other music. Well, not lots, but I listened through to like as much of their other music as I could before this happened. And they, I think, have, like, a, okay, I don't want to try and characterize their music, because I'll just sound like a hack, but I did like their music that I listened to, which came from the past two albums, I think. It's, uh, like has some complexity and also I really like the singers uh, like the way that he sort of brings out what he's singing I think that was cool when is the last time you went fishing <laughs> when I was in middle school one of my friends had a, um, his family owned a trailer in a trailer park that was like a vacation trailer park that his uncle owned in New Hampshire. And there was a lake there, of course. So we went fishing uh, on that lake. There was like a small little dock and it was a really nice sunny day. And there were lots of like little, I always thought they were sunfish. I didn't know what kind of fish they actually were, but we realized too late that the hooks we were using were too small, so, like, we both caught fish, but then the hooks were stuck inside of the fish, and that was, like, the last time I went fishing, and I haven't been fishing since. Dramatic. Yeah, for the fish, I guess. What is something that you have lost that you have never been able to find again? I kind of want to say, like, my sense of direction. I feel like I haven't been able to find a sense of direction. As far as something tangible, um, I had this lock that was like a miniature lock, and I actually did lose the key. And, yeah, I was not able to find the key, despite turning over, like, everything that I owned. I don't know where it possibly could be. 
it's when somewhere. Is this? Like pretty recently, I was cleaning out my my stuff, I guess, because I moved back here, and I found this lock, and yeah, I'm like, where's the key for this? Probably be a good thing to find. I don't know where it is. Who is your biggest critic? Mm, I wouldn't know the answer to that question because I think if somebody has a criticism of me, they probably wouldn't say it overtly because of the way I might react. But, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe God, when Judgment Day comes, biggest and most honest critic of them all. Describe the date you were most nervous for. I knew this guy who I really, really liked, and we stopped seeing each other for a while for various reasons, and I wanted to see him again. So I reached out to him, and I think just in general, he was definitely the day I was most nervous to meet, and also that day that we met for the time, for the first time in a while, I was also very nervous for that because I obviously wanted it to go well, and it went, it was not good, but that's sort of, I mean, what can you expect if you're so nervous for something? I don't know. What's the last rule that you broke? Well, I wore my shoes inside. <laughs> Here? That's a rule at home? It's kind of like a rule that I have for myself. But it's not a hard and fast rule. And sometimes I, I break it. Does that make it a rule if I allow myself to break it? Like, I don't know. But that's definitely the last one. And when was this? some point this morning if you had three things on an island what would they be probably an unlimited supply of paper um, also uh, some kind of musical instrument maybe an ocarina Although that might get kind of boring after a while. Um, and, oh, uh, my glasses. What is the most classic prank? Probably like plastic wrapping a toilet underneath the toilet seat. Or tripping someone. Tell me a story. <laughs> so, <laughs> this past summer, I worked in a lab. Some species of ants will burrow into those hollow spaces and they keep the eggs there and the poop there and whatever, and they live on the trees. And then uh, if like a big elephant or something wants to eat the trees, they can just eat the trees even though they're extremely thorny. And the thorns are like this big, it's pretty amazing. But the ants will like crawl onto them and attack them. But yeah, I was working in this greenhouse over the summer, just like taking care of the trees and these ants. Every day I'd go in with my dad, and that was nice because he always listens to WMBR, the MIT radio station, in the morning. And so we'd like listen to the low station, station on your dial. Yeah. 88.1, you know, etc. He like would talk about this and that band um, and we talk about other stuff or we just not talk at all a lot of times we just sit I met someone who also worked in the lab who uh, her name is Anina and she's from Utah and we got to be really close over the course of the summer and um, we would like, 
we had this sort of like ability to communicate without really saying that much, which was always fun. Uh, we would hang out and um, take care of the trees and the ants, and she was preparing to do an experiment. The way that we keep the ants in the lab is in these little boxes. They're like this big. They're just like little Tupperwares. And so we keep the ants inside of those with the bare necessities, like a little test tube filled with water plugged with a cotton ball so the ants can drink and we'd feed them. We had like, each colony gets its own box. So we had like 120 to 150 colonies over the course of the summer that we were taking care of. But yeah, to feed the ants was always like a crazy time because ants can crawl on pretty much anything. They just like stick. I don't know exactly how that works. Um, a lot of times they would escape from their boxes while we were feeding them. So like you can imagine Anina standing on my right and I'm standing on her left and we're giving the ants their food, which was this gross, like, have you ever had flan? Yes. Okay. I've had flan. So the ant food is basically flan. It's like agar, which is sort of a gelatin, and eggs and honey and water. It's really nasty and, uh, but edible, apparently. So we'd would scoop it onto these little cut up pieces of paper plates that we had made and then drop them into the ant boxes. But we had to go really fast because the ants crawl up the sides of the box and it's kind of terrifying to look down. get the impression that I'm being stingy? Not yet. Okay. <laughs> cool.